fam good afternoon good evening good night wherever you are welcome to the stream i am doc rock your community manager for ecamm and today we're going to be doing another ecamm demo okay cool so here's the rules if you're new around here let us know that you're new if you're not new i see you out there i know who you are but <laughs> but don't forget you can always ask your questions by throwing a q colon in the front and then if for some reason you got to go or whatever, we don't get to your question, we'll come back and answer it later. Make sure we get you covered. If you're watching this on the replay, you can always ask questions there, or you can just send us an email at supportdesk at ecamm.com or marketing at ecamm.com, and we will get you square hair away. Like, it's just simple. All right, cool. I see my people out here. Mr. Camera Junkie, good morning. Top of the morning to you. Let's go over here and... Do some minor adjusting things on the fly because you know how I do. I'm Doc. This is just what I do. All right, cool. So we got to say good morning to Simply Obs. Good to see you here. Mr. Devin Chambers in the building. How are you doing? Good, sir. Hey, Parker. Good to see you here as well. And then, wait, that was me. Haha. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Let's see. K Walk is here. How are you doing, K Walk? Comedy. It's just comedy. 
Hey, Mr. Paul Duncan. Yes, every time I say that, Paul, we have reached another Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Hello, Mr. Homesake Mac. He says, literally setting and creating scenes for the recurring tomorrow Sunday and then camera for the overlays. That is how you do it. That is how you do it. Hello, Miss Glenda. And I wish my brother George was here. Vigets, George, Vigets. Was ist los? There you go. That's as far as I get. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn some more random German things to say to my brother, George. <laughs> so, all right, gang. So we're going to dive in. Uh, many of you guys know how this work. This is our weekly demo. Um, you know, it's kind of one of these things that's super funny. In the beginning, we thought long and hard about doing the same demo over and over every Friday. Like what, what's going to happen? Well, I tell you what it's done for me just as a user myself, even though I'm quote unquote teaching you guys how to do this stuff by doing it over and over again. Like I am starting to find certain levels of muscle memory in my sort of ecam creation of things. Right. And I guess this is my cue to you guys. So you got to practice, right? So don't forget, if you are a member of the Facebook community, you can always go inside the Facebook community and practice. And the other thing that would probably be kind of smart to do is ask people to join you, ask people to jump on with you. And the reason for that is it helps you get better at your guest mode, at your interview mode, and you know, knowing what to do should something happen. Like we have a situation last Wednesday uh, well, the Wednesday before when I'm streaming with uh, Larry from OWC and the power went out, but we were able to recover it and just get right back to it. You know, it's almost like it didn't happen. So being able to handle those type of situations on the fly, you're kind of sort of only going to get from practice. So I behoove you do private unlisted streams on your YouTube channel, do private unlisted streams on your own personal, you know, Facebook page or whatever, and invite some friends along or feel welcome to do them in the community. As long as you are testing Ecamm, trying out something, learning something is fine. Go in the community and promote like, Hey, I'm Paul Duncan and I make fantastic donuts. Yeah. That would get you in trouble. But, um, Paul, by the way, those donuts are incredible. I'm just saying the coffee. I don't know why they think that's the best coffee. It's not, but the dun the donuts, Mr. Duncan, ho oh, Hercules, Hercules. Okay, cool. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yes, Mr. Paul, that is what I say. It's the reason why I'm doing this. <laughs> That's the best way to learn it is to teach it. All right, good to see everyone here, man. I saw something the other day, Glenda, and it completely reminded me of you. And now I forgot what it is because, well, I'm old. So, all right, so let's dive in. Gang, we're going to do something called live demo mode. And the secret sauce to that is hit the command shift D and then boom, live demo mode is upon us. The other thing that I did recently was I went ahead and I connected my stream deck so that people can stop saying, oh, like, how come, you know, we can't see your stream deck. So I do have that connected here as well. Um, it's really weird. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. It's over here. All right, cool. So we'll leave that just like this. So now this way, when you guys ask about stream decks, I can show you all the stream deck type things. Okay, cool. Let's dive in. <laughs> I know, Paul. I know. Oh my God. The yo-yo craze in Hawaii was so incredible that a couple of those guys that became like the national champions come from here and then so when you go to the mall on saturdays they'd be doing the trick competitions and there was a full-on 100 like yo-yo store here and it was incredible to watch the things that these guys would do with yo-yos and all i could ever do is bust myself in the chin with it all right, so this guy's here is my scene window this is the master window Again, I like to remind everyone, I think of scenes as acts in a play. And this is how you sort of matriculate through your show. You got your intro, you got your middle, you got your end, right? Maybe you got question and answer section. Maybe you have a news update section, whatever. This is how we do that. We generate separate scenes for all of the above. 
So like I would have a scene here where I'm talking and then say, I want to bring on a guest. I have another scene that has my guest in it. And then I can flip back and forth to myself and my guest. And then maybe I have another scene where there's both of us on camera. And there you see why Mrs. D is a guy. I don't know. So let's fix that before Diana kills me. Let's change her to guest too. So there, there you go. So now, now she's a girl. Um, and you can do stuff like that. It's really how you set your show up. It's not much different than what you watch on the TV or watch on the, um, on the TV. Why did I say on the TV or the, uh, it's what you watch on TV is very basically the same thing. We sort of move through the scenes as we move. Now, how you make one of these guys is relatively simple. I'll start up here at the top and here is blank naked scene. I like to start with command shift B, which gives me a blank scene. Mine's not exactly blank because I have a background, but you put a background on and this is where I build. Here in the middle, you have option to select camera or you can select screen share or you can select a movie. Let's play a movie. Um, time to update my bye bye screen. I feel like I like to change them every once in a while. Um, you could play some other cool movies. I don't know. Is this still in my computer? Low, medium, and high. Of course, I picked right in the middle. And I figured out. So would a that's how you would build your scenes. Again, you can run cameras. You can run uh, overlays. I'm sorry. You can run screen share or you can run movies and all of the above are controlled by this top little thicky wicket right here in the top. The next thing you'll see is this little master panel. And this might not be here on your screen. I leave it there because that's where I like it. It comes out of the box down here. I like it up there because I put my comments down there. So, um, of course I'm gonna sit here and tweak on making it perfectly in the center. Cause I'm weirdo. Okay, so here you will see your additional cameras. So if I came over here and select this camera, you can see my messy desk, which I told it to run the zoom and pan so it stays looking straight. Come on, keyboard. You got to be exactly straight. Don't be a nerd. All right, cool. So then you can see my keyboard if you're doing that. And again, that is controlled by adjusting the zoom and pan widgety guy over here. Right? So if I want to make it like just there at the top, you can see that. You can see all of my stream deck buttons right there. So like you can go and, you know, click buttons to change cameras. I don't use that setup. I use just, you know, buttons. Um, but yeah, simple in the top. So this is how this goes in this little sticky wicket thing down here. You can also press a button to pull up picture in picture, but because of the way I don't have anything to picture in picture at the moment, you don't see anything, but let's say I were to add another, guest there. That's where the guests would be. I can place them anywhere. That's from using the picture in picture. I can also click on the little rotate thing to flip them back and forth, right? This is how everyone used to do their guests before we made some minor upgrades, which I'll show you in a second. You can put your guests as a square. That is the old classic four by three. This is the square. This is a rondelay, like rondelay. <laughs> Uh, I call it the Bradney Vincent mode. And then you can make your guests look like they're calling from a telephone. Hello, London calling. So yeah, you could do something like that. If I go back to a standard issue wide joint, you could press in this little bitty gear right here. And then you can say, pull the crop. And then you can do that. So let me go back to this here. And then you see they would come out as a crop situation like such. You can add more guests and then more guests and then one more guest and you got yourself a party. So that is basically how you run a generic scene, but we're going to get a tad bit more swank than such because, well, we're an Ecamm family and we kind of like swank. All right, so let's get rid of that and there. So this is how you would build a scene. And from here, you can press the bottom of the box in the center icon to duplicate a scene. I like to do that when I have an element on screen and I want to make sure things stay level or I want to make an iteration of a screen. I tend to do the copy scene. It makes life easier. And then of course, as you can see on my window here, I have folders. I use folders to separate my shows. Some people use folders to separate elements of their show. 
So you can put scenes in folders and you can make them play automatically. So if I go to down here, you'll see this different show and then I'll go back to the top. All right. So that's basically scenes in a nutshell. How scenes get cool is over here in the next panel, which is overlays. Overlays panel is how you make everything, everything. It's how you make your, your show cool. It's how you make it pretty, all of the above, right? So in overlays, we have three sections. We have show in the current scene, show in all scenes, and all the way down here at the bottom, show in the background, okay? There you go. Now, show in the background means if I come over here to make a new scene, again, it's blank. You see this background down here. This is show in the background. And the reason why we have that is if I were to apply a camera, that stays. The background is always, well, back there, right? So that's what this show in the background situation is for. They can be stills. They can be subsequent movie films. So you can see this one is animated because it is playing a movie film on the loop. So you can do something coolio with the flow like such and then still be able to move your cameras around. You click on this little guy and it will allow you to change your cameras to the proper shape to order to match this design and then put the camera like right about in chair. I always say whoever designed this, your circles aren't exactly circles, but we'll let them slide. All right, there you go. So you can adjust your design like such. And be like, look, mom, I'm in a circle. So that's why you would do it like this. Um, is it possible to make your mouse cursor bigger? Yeah, if I shake it, it becomes bigger. But I can do... Uh, and I don't do that. Let's see. Pro mouse there. Now we have purple um, widget. We'll wait for, I'm checking the YouTube to see if you can sync it. All right, it's going to take a second. Man, YouTube is way behind today. That's funny. All right, let's see. We'll give it a second to see if that pops. But yeah, it should pop. Anyway, so uh, the best thing to do in order to kind of like go through this again is watch any of the demos on replay and then you can pause various sections and then try what you're doing and things like that. Um, that, that does help out a lot. And then it should show clicks when I radiate, but here we go again. So whenever you're adjusting cameras, all your adjustments are done from the little pencil right here, or you can come in the side over here and click the gear. It's the same situation will pop up. You'll get the, the little drop down box that allows you to select your camera or select the shape, right? Command Z undoes things. So that's the other thing that everyone kind of sort of forgets. In most cases, if you make a little screw up, then just do a command Z and it will go away. So there you go. All right. Now, um, the next situation that you will do is I'll go ahead and put this back here on the top. And again, this is where we put all of our overlays. So down here on the bottom, let me see if this works. I never remember what these are down here on the bottom. This is where we're going to select whether we want to bring in a picture an animated um, situation, a text, a clock or a countdown timer or something that has to do with timing. And then there is a web widget, how we select the camera and how to put things in folders. And of course the obligatory trash can, right? So there's that there's these are icons again, down here, we have the image, the animated overlay, the text, the um, countdown timer, the widget, the camera, the folder, and then the trash key. Trash key. What the heck is a trash key? The trash can. You guys want to see something creepy? Whoa. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> there you go. Um, if you guys are wondering how I'm pulling off this fancy trick, this is Pro Mouse. Thank you, Alec Johnson. Alec Johnson for the win. All right, cool. So 
I don't press these buttons for for images and overlays. I drag images. I drag overlays. Why? Because that's just how you should do it. Why? Because it's simple. It's a Mac. It's drag and drop. Um, I think a lot of people overcomplicate the Mac because they forget that everything in Mac world is drag and drop. It's like, well, how do you do that? I don't know. Drag and drop it. Oh my God, that worked. Yeah. It's been that way since 1984 when the lady threw the hammer into the window. Like it literally been that way for 30 some years. So let's drag this over here and then boom, we have us a image, right? So I, I literally picked that up from my desktop and I dragged it in. So I'm going to put it on the desktop over here so you can see that I picked this up, right? I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pick this image up. I'm going to drag it over here, turn it loose, and then there it is. I'm using my scroll wheel to embiggen and unembiggen it. You can always grab a corner. There's these little handleys on the corner. So you can just put these on here, and then you can adjust it from any corner to which you want. You just literally adjust adjust then you put it up here and say oh that's almost right and then you can use arrow keys to move it over ever so slightly Ugh, okay simple simple as that um yes i can go into folders um it's simple all right cool so check this out i'm going to take this image that i just made and i want to create a folder wait i press the camera See, this is what happens when you do stuff that's dumb. I'm going to press the folder, all right? And here's a folder group. And I'm going to call this folder logo. Or actually log because, you know, why, why spell when you can spell, doc? So logo, right? So just so you can see that, logo. I'm going to take this icon and I'm going to drag it in there. And then I'm going to twirl it shut. And then that is my logo file in there. So if I turn this off, don't panic, goes away. Okay. So now I'm going to put this up here and then I'm going to put learn how to type doc. All right. I'm just going to put that here. I'm going to put that there, scroll it back just a taste. One of you, some of you guys are smart and you're going, ha, I get it, doc. You're funny. Right. So now I'm going to click on this little pencil here, select fixed position, fly in from the right, say save. All right. So now when to turn this text on and turn the text off, it comes in from the right. So now I'm going to drag it into my folder. So what that does, right, is if I have my logo turned on and my text turned on. Oh, man, I almost lined it up like a boss. Come on, gang. Can you get a round of applause? Yay. So now they're in the folder. Right? So if I close it, it's gone. If I turn it on, they come together. That's all the folders are for. So you can group things together. Together. Baby, together. Together. That's it. So that's what the folders would be for. So it's kind of handy because you can set a couple, two, three things and have them come off at the same time. So let's drag one more text element, stick it into the folder here. Right. And then so now when I turn this on, my elements should pop pop ishoni. Right. So if I turn it on, ishoni is Japanese for together. Sorry. <laughs> if you if you press this button, shoom. Isho nandere sugea. That means it's very nice. It's very nice. So that Mr. Homesick Mac is how you do fancy stuff with folders. That's round about it. So what you guys saw me do there was take a text box where I typed in the answer to the universe and everything in it. And then they're also in the text box. You can come over here and click on the emoji and you can find items in the emoji that you would want to use. So let's get a uh, vehicle like this bus here and then add it to the screen and then we can scroll to embiggen this bus and then let's put the bus like right here and then click on the pencil and then say we want this to come from the right 
and then say save, and we just take this bus and we throw it in the folder too, and then we turn the folder on. It's simple. So if you want to know more about how to do those fancy sort of stuffs, check out our stream on Monday with Fulgens, FJ, Largehead Henry, and Anna Hill, because they do a fantastic job of teaching you all of that craziness on a show they have called Building Blocks and on the ENN stream, which is the Ecamm News Network. And they, man, they come up with crazy things like that. And yeah, it's cool. I really do like the folder thing. I don't use it much because I tend to keep my shows simple as possible. I don't know why everybody wants all the bells and whistles. Me personally, I'd rather just be me. But then I'm weird. Uh, my bells and whistles is I make weird sound effects with my face instead of my roadcaster, which I have, but most of the time the noise just comes out of my head. <laughs> okay, so the other option down here is you'll see the next button is where you would press to get an animated overlay. When you press these buttons, it opens up a doohickey um, dialogue box. That's the word we're looking for. If you click this, it opens up a dialog box so you can grab myriad things to pop them in there. Me personally, me not like that. I prefer myself again to just go in and drag things from the desktop. So I'm opening folder on my desktop. You know, Doc, one day it would be kind of genius if you put all the stuff that you want to show on a demo in a single folder so you don't have to go get it all the time. Okay, note to self. All right, so I'm going to grab an overlay from my uh, little folder here. I'm looking for something cool, animated overlay. Uh, uh. What you should do is organize this hot mess of a folder. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's an overlay. I'm just going to drag it in. So you guys see, I'm holding this. I'm going to turn it loose. You can ask anything you like, anything. Okay, so what you get right here is add an animated, animated, add an animated overlay. Do you want to add this file as an animated overlay or an animated overlay? Do not include audio, or do you want to add it as a full screen with audio? So I'm going to say animated overlay because that's what we was trying to do, and we get an animated overlay. Shapang. So now. When I put this over here into this area and I turn the overlay on, it will play. There's a little triangular guy down here that says, when it's done, do nothing or go night night or loop it. So again, for the people in the back, I have it set to autoplay. I could tell it to do nothing. I could tell it to hide or I could tell it to loop the loop, right? So. What now what happens is when I press this button for the eyeball to come on, doing, then the anime comes out. Anime. Animation comes out. Okay. But we're going to take this animation and we're going to delete it because I do have on my computer someplace one that has um, noise in it. And so in this case, I'm going to drag what's called the WebM because since that dialog box came out, we have updated the application and now you can do audio. Look, mom, I'm on TV, right? So now when you do this, it actually audio files the audio files. So you can actually do it with audio. You just need to have them in WebM format. So that's what happens when you press that. This text box guy, you guys see me, um, you know, and it, it kind of works. So you press the text box. You can do, again, lots of things, right? You can type in your stuff. Um you can do, basically, let's go get a long piece of text. Mm -hmm. I'm going to scrub this, copy it, put this on scroll position, and then I'm going to paste it in, and then I'm going to do like 24, and then do add. And then now we're scrolling Amir's question across the screen but we're going to turtle it because that's a little fast right and then we're going to pencil it again and we're going to embiggen it to like 
36, and then we're going to put a background, and then we're going to go like that. Then we can read Amir's question as a scroll. Um, but I, the thing, Amir, to answer your question while this is scrolling, oh, let me do one other thing. Yeah, it's scrolling across the screen. The thing is, uh, what you're trying to do is actually complicated, but not. Um, we don't support VST plugins. So therefore you have to take the core audio out of Ecamm. You have to feed it into a host that will accept core audio plugins, right? That can be a DAW, that could be audio hijack, you know, like something of that nature. And then you have to take that and feed it to your stream. So back in. So a couple ways to do this. Higher end mixers can do this because all your mix minusing and your busing is built into higher end mixers, right? Um, if you're trying to do this off of standard audio interfaces, um, my favorite Catholic saint is Saint Happening. <laughs> so you're going to have to go and build an audio bus. The problem that most people have is they don't understand latency and what, what's going to happen when you try to build a complicated thing. So I personally just don't bother. I talk to my guests ahead of time. I teach them how to properly set their microphones so that I don't have to worry about what their sound sounds like when they come to my show. I've already spent the day with them to get their microphone correct Make sure that everything is good so that you can do as little processing before it leaves. The other thing, rather than you doing that, you could teach them how to use audio hijack or something so they can pre-process their mics before they send it to you. Um, but everyone's trying to do it in a single system because they don't want to bother their guests. And I'm like, doesn't really work that way. In fact, when I know I have a really good guess and I'm and I need to make sure that they're good, I will send them a microphone because that's better than having them come and mess up the show, right? I mean, it's easier for me to go to Amazon and select, you know, like the newer USB or the Samsung Q2U at 35 and 50 bucks and just send it to them, teach them how to plug it in. That takes way less energy than trying to build a complicated like bus and pass through system to try to make an internet stream the same as a radio broadcast. It just doesn't work. Um, yeah. And that's what any, we just don't do VSD plugins yet. The boys know about it. They keep being bugged about it. Maybe they'll add it in, but we also have to remember, I'm sorry, Glenda, I'm going to pick on you for a second. If we put VST plugins and then we have, Lots of users, maybe majority of the users that are at this level audio where you and I are at this level audio can't even fit in the frame. It's going to mess them up because you and I are few and far between. Right. But the average user, your Glenda's, your Paul's, you know, uh, people that are in the chat, they're not going to want to do that. Like Homesick Mac is a musician. So I get he would be like me, super stoked to have VST plugins. I mean, just ask the audience who knows what a VST plugin is and a couple of us will answer. So you, it can be done, but you're going to have to put in the work. There are a bunch of tutorials from members in our groups on how to do it. And I would tell you to reach out to a person in our group named Joel Foner, who has his entire thing, go through pro tools, each channel properly bust and set up. And it's amazing. So it can be done, but yeah, we don't have VST plugins at the moment. But yes, drop drop into the uh, Facebook community and link up with Joel, J-O-E-L, Foner, F-O-N-E-R, and then that will solve your problem. Just saying. Okay, now I can take the scrolling thing off. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't. What are you saying right now or when you try to stream? Right. Um, yeah, I, you, you got to specify your question. And again, put Q colon in front, like re re ask the question in a question format 
instead of a statement because I don't know what to do with the statement. Sorry. And then put Q colon in front so I can find you just in case I'm going quick. All right. Um, yes, Homesick Mac is doing exactly what I'm talking about. Using audio hijack, send that virtual loop back. Yeah, it can be done. Thank you, Mr. Paul. I appreciate you. Boom. Yeah, see, Melvin's also a musician, Amir. He does amazing stuff, too. And I I get it. Like, I'm with you guys. I kind of want VST plugins, and not because I want to do compression and all of that stuff, because compression is simple. Buy a DBX-286 and stick your microphone in it and compress it in hardware because it's easier and it sounds better, <laughs> right? And it's not expensive. A DBX-286 is 180 bucks. Like, it's not even expensive. However, um, like right now, my compression is coming from the Rodecaster Pro. So like it, I just got an interface that has compression built in. Um, but so I would love it just so that I could see my meters. I like real meters. I'm a weirdo. I want to know exactly what my metering looks like. Um, but I think our other problem that we have is we have a lot of people streaming on older machines and giving them VST stack will crush their processing. Uh, Non-destructive uh, audio fixing on the fly is processor intensive. And I would assume that's probably the number one thing that would want to hold back people from doing this type of audio processing on the fly, especially audio processing on the fly with five guests. And you're like, oh, I'm trying to stream from my MacBook. <laughs> that's funny good luck with that uh yep good luck with that that would be funny but yeah i think it's a great idea though but yeah definitely link up amir with joel and he'll you'll be like oh my god this guy is a freaking audio wizard because he used to tour with the famous rock band as the sound guy so he knows all of these cool stuffs all right cool so next on the occasion would be uh, our fancy clocks gang. We love the clocks cause clocks can do all of the things. So I come over here, I can flick on the old timer timer here and then say, Oh, you know what? I want this to blend a little bit more in the background. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the background guy. Then I'm gonna come down here and click on the little, um, Turkey baster. And then I'm going to click on that and then I'm gonna press save. And then it's a little bit closer to that color. Right. So that's your timer. Now you can click on this timer and you can change it. Let's change it to time of the day. So you guys can see that. What the heck did I just press? Cause that wasn't time of the day. <laughs> uh, clock. That's the answer. It's called a clock. It's not called time of the day. <laughs> Hello, English. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So I can throw my little clock over here. And that will work um, quite dope steez, you know, a little nice setup there. Uh, then you can come over here and go do a stopwatch. So it's like, go. So then you can have the little stopwatch guy playing. And that's, you know, doing a quiz, doing a timed function, trying to see who can solve an equation at the fastest time something of that nature. So that's how you would do that. And then you would turn off the auto start probably for that particular function so that you can start it and then hit the reset button and try to see if I can click under a second. Oh, come on gang. Come on. He clicked it under a second. Talk about lightning speed round. Just, Oh, dang. gangster. That second one was slow. So there you go. You can do that. That's another cool situation. And you could also do countdown to a certain day in time. So let's come over here. Let's pop this guy on the holiday, right? So it is two days, eight minutes, and 40 some odd seconds until 4th of July weekend. Hey, is that Judah? Hey, Judah, how's it? Two buddy in the hizzy. Yes. Good to see you here. Appreciate you. Okay. So that's how we handle uh, things that you can do with the timer. Again, there's a lot of cool stuff. One of our favorite tricks in here is go to next scene when finished, right? 
gang, if I come over here, do go to next scene with finish, that means I can take this timer here, put this guy on like zero, zero, put this guy on like 10, and then I'm going to turn this guy loose. I'm going to take off auto start just so that I can catch it. Right. So I'm going to take this clock. I'm going to super embiggen it over here. I'm um, going to take off the background real quick. So you'll see why in a second. But what's going to happen is I'm going to leave this guy here. And then I have my second scene here. Right. Actually, we'll leave it like we'll just do it that way. All right. So when I press play dun -ka -dun, and we give it time to count down and then we'll say and five, four, three, two, one. Bye bye. See how easy that is. You can automatically switch over to the other side. Oh, I see. It's Shelly. I should have guessed that. Hello, Shelly. Everyone, raise your pineapples for Shelly. <laughs> That's an inside joke for the Shelly Saves the Day fam. Everybody knows about her and her pineapples. Okay, so I'll show you another cool trick. So now I got my timer here, right? And I'm like, that's cool, Doc, but I don't want the whole planet to see my timer. Okay, Doc, then press this and come over to here in your color picker. And this little word right here says opacity. All right, so I'm going to grab the opacious slider and I'm going to slider it to the nothing. And then press go. All right, so now the clock is here. It is invisible. Invisibilis clocticus, you can't see it. All right. But I'm going to press the button and then let it count down. And we just sit here and wait. And then we wait. It's almost done. And now we change. Ta -da! See? So that's how you can do invisible list clocticus timerus, right? So if you come in here, you set up a couple of scenes, right? Let's just say you got a couple few cameras in your situation, right? You got camera here, camera here, camera here. All you need to do. Set your little timer, have it change, say every five minutes, and then hide the timer, right? Then your show is automatically switching, and it gives it some action. It gives it some energy, some fire, instead of just a big head person, center stage, talking head. You can make adjustments, and it'll automatically change. That's cool. If, homesick Mac, pay attention. If I did that and stuck all of these in the folders, they would just cycle through the folders and just do what they do. So this would be very good for someone like Homesick Mac, who's over there playing his guitar. And do all of that. And it could change. Go to the close-up. Go to the sound hole. Go to his um, less than handsome face. I'm joking. And then go back to the sound hole. Go to the fretboard. And it would just be... Uh, of various situations, having them automatically change because he can't necessarily change scenes while he's doom, -ba -da -doom, doom, doom. There you go. So that's that's a cool trick that you can do. So <laughs> saving the day head to buddy. Question: Is there a way for us to record or engineer a podcast without me being seen remotely? I'm going to assume you mean you're not on camera. I'm going to assume you mean me have someone else engineering my sound while I do this. If that's what you mean, uh, yes and no. Um, it's not that type of app. If you mean... Okay, so we have a bunch of us that do our podcast directly in Ecamp. We take the isolated audio files after they're done, and then we either edit them ourselves in Logic, Audition, GarageBand, Studio One, Ableton, whatever, or we send that bundle off to an engineer and let them engineer their podcast. That engineer is remote so they can do all the things. If you're recording on the fly, you probably shouldn't engineer on the fly because that's asking for trouble. If you record on the fly, you want to record naked and clean and then adjust after the fact because, well, podcasts aren't live. Live streams are live. 
podcasts are designed to be uploaded, downloaded at the user's will. So you have all the time in the world to engineer. So I guess that's where I'm confused in the question, but then I'm a Virgo, so I'm hyper semantic. So you got to kind of answer the, ask the question as normally as possible. But if you, I'm assuming you mean you want someone to move sliders while you're recording live, not unless they're in the same room with you. Cause yeah, that's, that's a veritable impossibility. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know of anything that allows me to do other than adjust volume remotely. I don't, I don't even see how that works, but if you know something I don't, or there's a platform that have it, let me know. And I can present that and see if that's something that we would partake. But I do this a lot. I don't know of a single platform that allows anyone to slide sliders on somebody else's computer remotely to adjust sound on the fly other than volume. Um, mostly because of the way core audio works, right? So I guess some of the browser solutions kind of do that, but they cover volume. They don't really do anything other than cover volume. So I guess what is the end result you're attempting? That's the big, that's the better question. Um, what exactly are you trying to attempt and why? Cause again, Adjusting someone's audio so that they sound better, that's not really engineering, and that should have been handled in the pre-tech. It sounds to me a lot of the questions are coming from people that don't pre-tech their shows, right? So if I'm going to do a show and I'm going to have Shelly come on from TubeBuddy on Wednesday, I would have had a check with her on Tuesday or earlier Wednesday to make sure that her mic sounds nice. Check one, make sure that her volume is correct. Make sure everything is there. Tell her, take a picture of the settings. Remember these settings. And when you call in for the show, make sure everything match the pre-tech. It's sort of like how when Michael Buble shows up in your hometown and the concerts at nine, but he comes to the stadium at three to do a sound check then there doesn't have to be much changes during the show. I think that's probably what we're looking at. But again, I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that was just for you. Yes, put them in the folder, add a timer to them, make them transparent. Um, who's talking about an A10 Mini? I not see A10 Mini. I... I don't say this out loud. Nobody repeat me. Nobody heard me say this. I don't like A10 Minis. Anyway, um, I'm not sure what you meant. Who said what about A10 Mini? Okay. I had to walk away. Mr. Part said yes. But yes, yes. Just put them in the folder. Put the transparent timer. And then you should be good to go. But yes, um, to you media. Again, let let me make sure I understand your question. So add, add some more info and we'll see if we get you squared away. Okay, so that covers the overlay section primarily. The only other thing we need to talk about real quick, like, is come in here and do the Fiji widgets. Because if I click this button here and say add a widget, it's going to go add a widget. This one is improperly sized, but you come in here and type in 1280 tab 960, and then boom, and then it's going to put the widget on the screen. What this does is basically allows a piece of code from another place on the internet, stream lab, stream elements, things of that nature, and allow you to place them over your screen. What they do is give you interactivity should somebody want to send you something, a tip or a super chat or something of that nature. It allows it to pop up on the screen automatically while you are doing your show. So that's what we do with those widgets there. And it's kind of cool. That is fun stuff. <laughs> right? Camera junkie? I don't know why. I had one. I tried it. I sent it back. It's main reason why, I guess it's handy. Okay, A10 Mini is handy if you have a weak computer and you need to put four cameras because it would take the weight off your camera. But as far as just switching cameras, I feel... More, more fast. It's not a right English. It's, it's faster to just do it directly in Ecamm than apply another device and things like that. So, yeah. I Me mean, not understand. Me don't understand. Okay, dokie. The next situation we have here is our levels. 
Okay, here he goes. A10 Mini is fine for manual switching, one pit pre-configured setting. But as soon as I get my Mac Mini, um, yeah, and and that's and it's because Ecamm only sees the ATEM as a single device. It doesn't see it as multiple devices. So a lot of your overlay tricks and all of that are just thrown out the window in the minute you throw in it. All of what I just showed you basically in the last how many minutes is gone. <laughs> so that's that's sort of why. But your primary building, all the tricks that you want to build sort of exist in this window right here. Okay, so next question. This is where we adjust sounds. As you can see, my mic is there. And then if I hit any sound effects, then it will make that, right? I hit, How you, like that? you know, that comes through my roadcaster. This next one here is for my overhead camera. The next one here is if I were, again, to play a subsequent movie film that had some like audio in it let's see uh let's see let's see let's see when i when i do that it mutes the mics on purpose but the video plays and you saw that the audio came from the movie section sound effects has to do with when we press this right that's where your sound effects come and again these sliders move up and down so you can adjust accordingly system audio i think somebody asked a question about being able to hear youtube play while they were live this is how that is done that is done by let's come over here Let's find a video. Uh, let's play this. Sure, Friday. And then go this to screen the share. Where we like to dive into some of the coolest features inside of Ecamm Live. We like to okay. show you these features individually. Okay, so I'm going to go there, come out of demo mode. No, not that side, ding dong, over here. Ba bam. Okay, so now we're out of demo mode. And then when I play this, I press the button over here play so that we can make sure that your ecam experience is the absolute bomb today we are going to go through pre okay so you guys can see man dang it <laughs> sorry i keep trying to bookmark that uh da -da -da, live ship demo you can see when you do this <clears throat> it does play the video from over here when I press play preferences, right? yes, preferences. So you can now, see in my system so audio, you you, be quiet, doc. You, you can see in my system audio tab that the audio is playing. Now, a couple warnings about doing such a thing. All right. So let's turn, let's get rid of that and let's come back over here. So a couple warnings. As you can see, playing a video live during a stream kind of a bad idea because it's choppy it just don't look right people download the videos that you want to play in your stream if you don't have the rights to download the videos you don't have the rights to play them in your stream because every time we tell people hey it's better it's more smooth it's just nicer it's easier for your machine it's every even easier for your users. You don't have to worry about the system audio plugin, which I will reshow you guys in a second. Um, you don't have to worry about that stuff. It just comes out much much smoother if you just play the file directly in your show. And then some people say, "Well, I'm playing it from this website and I'm playing it into my stream, and then it's choppy. How do you fix it?" Well, you download it. Well, I can't download it because it's on this website then you're not supposed to play it. You don't have the rights to play it. You're doing something illegal. And you're asking us to tell you how to break in the law, break in the law. Yeah, that's just not the situation. Because if you have the rights to play it, you should be able to download it. Simple. Now, there's tricks around that. We won't get into that. That's different. But the reason why 
is you're trying to process and send the signal out of your computer at the same time you're trying to process and play the signal into your computer and it's kind of not a good look, right? You can do it from a different computer. You can do it from an iPad. You can pull it from a phone. All of those work really well. But doing them on the same computer, they tend to fight. This is a fully loaded iMac, 64 gigs, 10 core processor with a 16 gigabyte graphics card. Like this is the fastest Intel Mac they make at the moment. And it don't like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm, I crab to understand when people tell me I'm doing this with my MacBook and it doesn't work. Uh, no Sherlock. Exactly. It shouldn't do that. So I get that. It's, yes, you can make it work, but you probably shouldn't because it's not a comfortable feel for your audience. Right? Okay. So what you're going to want to do, click over here in live demo mode, Doc. Click on Ecamm, scroll down to the bottom where it says install system audio. Mine is already installed, so it says uninstall system audio. But as long as you have this installed, whenever you play something from your computer, it will play an Ecamm. And it doesn't matter. In my particular case, I was playing a video. Let's open up music. I'm going to open up music. <laughs> um, boom. Boom. So let's come over, let's go to screen, sure. And then here we go on music. So I can just play this song real quick. And you'll see right down here, it plays. So people say, oh, I tried to play music from my iTunes and it don't work. All you have to do is have system audio turned on and it will play. And if I scroll this down just a taste, and then scroll this out just a taste, whoa, wrong direction. You can see it playing right there in the window. So, yes, you can absolutely play any sound that your computer will make. Ecamm will pick it up. You just have to have it set up. Now, one caveat. If your mixer has built-in mix minus and you have a guest on, that no longer works. Because the whole point of mix minus mix. Mix minus is to take the sound that your computer is playing back to you and remove it because otherwise you will only hear yourself and your guests at the same time. So if your mixer has mix minus, then the system audio trick doesn't work and you have to go get into your own audio routing according to your mixer's manual and then figure out how to set a pass through for a particular program through the mix minus. Oh, that sounds complicated. Yeah, because it is. But Audio routing, if you're going to do this, you're kind of going to have to learn some audio routing tricks because that is where it is. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mr. Melvin. I had Soundflower first because that's was a little, you know, old school. And then I went to Black Hole. Uh, Katie wanted me to make a tutorial on Black Hole. And I'm like, Katie, I'm going to throw this iMac in the ocean across the street because Black Hole is a freaking headache it is it is hard it took me a hot minute to remove it it ain't easy it's just not easy i ended up going to reddit and finding a post where someone walked you through all of the 80 things you got to dig into to get rid of it but it is a pain in the tuchus <laughs> let's just put it that way so i feel for you um yeah yeah it's funny. A lot of folks did that stuff. Uh, yeah, but it's it's a, it's a task. If I find the link, I'll send it to you. But whew, sorry about that, brother. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, gang. Down over Chia. This is our sound effects panel here. This is basically where you guys see me pulling music from. You know, random things. You also got your sound effects in here. Like, All right, so we move. That's, that's Miss D. That's not a sound effect. Ow, that hurt my ears. Turn that down. I, It's there. I really don't use the sound effects panel for anything other than playing music because I pull my sound effects from a Rodecaster Pro, but you could do some cool stuff like attach a sound to a scene. So for instance, I could take this and then right click on the little cog wheel and then 
press add a hot key to add a hot key, or I can go add the scene. And then now up here, you'll see the scene file is attached to my scene, right? So whenever I play that scene, that audio will automatically play. And as you can see right here, I have a hot key for H. So if I go to my keyboard, it starts to play that song. And then I press the H again, it stops playing that song. So you can add keyboard triggers to sound effects in the panel. And again, to load a sound effect, pick them up from your, um, your desktop, just drag them suckers over here or click the plus sign and have it load for you that way. One last thing to note, ab oh yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, man. One last thing to note is in this window, if you click on the cog wheel, this little button that doesn't have a name is the volume independently. So a lot of you guys get audio files from all over the web and some are loud and some are soft. So you can adjust them how they play with this little guy right there. So yeah, I basically take my sound files when I download them and run them through Alphonic to get them all at the same level. So I don't have to worry about that because that is quite disconcerting. All right. So that covers sound files. As you can see here, gang, here's my comment window down here. What I have been doing this whole entire show, Graham, is clicking on this and having your comment show up or click on the next one and have your comment show up. But one trick you can do is drag a comment up and then you'll get two or three on the screen at the same time, right? So Indy said, speaking on editing for a PC user recommendation for intermediate all-in-one video editor that's easy to use for volunteers, um, a Mac. Adobe Rush is the answer to your question. Adobe Rush is free and they will get it done. But the real answer is a Mac. <laughs> sorry sorry i know i know i know it was a cheap answer i know i'm sorry can't help myself i used to work at apple <laughs> so anyway that, that's your comment section you can use the search box to look for something like i lost a comment about a tim i can hit that and then i can see all in fitness and homesick mac we're talking about that the reason why i tell you guys to ask questions with a q colon is that can throw the q and then you can see question from Glenda, question from Homesick Mac, and question from Amir. But, oh, that was that. So, you know what I mean? So, that's why we do that. And then the last trick, I can come down here. I can star this and star this. That way, if I press favorite comments, I can answer them and then unstar it and then unstar it. So, that's how you do that. And then this little guy right here tells me that 13 people hit the like button. And every once in a while, you'll see something. Shoo, shoo, looks like Casper the friendly ghost that is people reacting to the stream and pressing those buttons on the fly. Okay. This here is my program out window. This is what the world sees. Whenever you see this box here, this little bitty one is what the world sees. Cause what that does is allows me to press preview, come over here, put Melvin's question on the screen, right? Drag in the logo, Two and nothing happens until I press publish, right? So if I'm out of demo mode, then you guys wouldn't have saw those changes that I was making on the background, right? So if I come over here, pop out of live demo mode and delete this and let's see, um, move this guy to over here, you have no idea because you can't see nothing until I press publish. And then you would know that I have moved these graphics. You wouldn't see me dragging it across the screen until I press publish, right? So that gives you the opportunity to make changes on the fly. And again, pay attention to the small window. When I press publish, then it finally moves. So it's important to pay attention that this is in yellow because you can't see Dr. Elo's comment to the world. So if I come out, there is no Dr. Elo comment until I press publish. And then the Dr. Elo comment pops up in the window. So that is your preview mode and go back to live. I barely use it because I always forget to turn it off. <laughs> and I'm over here talking about stuff that nobody can see. So that part is a little bit weird. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's that for that. And then Homesick Max says, Are you sending in 4K? Why, yes, I miss. Yes, I am. So there's that. And then the last section to cover, gang, is our, well, two sections. Our guest feature, this is where you copy a link, you send that to your people. That allows your guests to come on. We kind of showed you how you can build various things in the guest side of situations as far as adding a guest to your show by pressing the little button or taking a guest off. Um, this down here, the interview section in the sound effect panel is where you can adjust your guest audio. Pro tip, I like to keep this guy around 80 so that I can make adjustments on the fly for my guests when they come in. I can turn their volume up, control it that way. Instead of having this, if you start your interview with this fully pegged and the one that shows up over here fully pegged and you need them to pick it up, only they can control their audio and it's not right. So I tune this guy to 80 and then during the pretext show, I get them sounding good at 80. But then if we're doing it live and someone says, hey, I can't hear your guests, I can jack it up. I control. That's my remote produce kind of situation. Okay, then over here, we have our camera effects window. We touched on it a little bit, but you'll see I'll pop on my blue screen, which I don't really have because I don't like them. Um, or I could go green screen, which doesn't work, but purple kind of fakes blue. So you can do that. And then you adjust how much of you or how much of it shows accordingly. This is how you 86 those little lines that might be behind you. If I press on blur the background, I can make the picture less understandable. Yeah, that doesn't really work, right? So you can do that, turn it off, and then turn that off. So this is how you adjust that. Um, and then where you get your images from is you click this guy. These are the built in. This is what I added. So you can add, you know, something like that. Any kind of picture you want, or it could actually even be a, a video. If you want the background to be a video, you would just select the transparent option over here. Let me do that. Select the transparent option, and it's playing my video background from over here, and this does look kind of creepy. I might just change my countdown to this because it's like, hey, gang, looky here, coming through. Damn, coming home. Anyway, that is super odd. <laughs> Let's turn that off. I showed you the pan and zoom situation real quick. You can adjust and move around. You can zoom rate things in or out just to try to line yourself up better for your overlays. And then we get into picture settings where I can control the brightness, right? I can control the temperature, cooler, warmer, cooler, warmer. I can control the tint, more magenta, more green. I can control the saturation, right? Quick little spray tan. And then gamma, loosely described as contrast, but then we jack it all up, just press reset. And then LUTs are lookup tables, which is how you do something fancy like such, right? Or I want to pick a different one. I will pick drama. Save the drama for the mama. So you come here and then you can do a quite dramatic LUT. It makes me look incredible. But people, be careful. Too much LUTing is bad for your health. You can do mirror if you're fighting a virtual camera where everyone sees you backwards or you're trying to control a uh, teleprompter type thing. You can do that. Then you can select film noir. Frankly, Scarlet Bam, I don't give a damn. You can do that. And you have rotate 180 for Batman mode. De interlace is mostly for old school camcorders. And then remember to set what is your default camera -er. Mr. George. This question is coming through. How can I get the main camera in one scene black and white and then in another back to a color? I tried that, but it tends to be a global setting. Okay, so let's take this scene right here. This is me, okay? And then 
I'm going to duplicate this seat. All right. And then I'm going to put it back on camera. All right. So then we're going to press black and white. And then we're going to go back to this one. Color, black and white. Color, black and white. That's it. <laughs> you just set the right in your... Set the right camera. George... <laughs> Just said it. It is per scene. It is not global. <laughs> I don't know. Oh look. Okay. This just one more. Just one more. Just one more for my brother George. I wish my brother George was here. Okay. I'm gonna press this, and then we're gonna go rotational, and then we're gonna take this guy off, and then we're gonna go black and white color, black and white rotational. So. Let's do one more thing just to make this even more funny because I'm feeling it today. Let's go to uh, video and let's go from cross dissolve to copy machine. Yeah! Sorry. Go to copy machine and then transition eight. So that's how you do it, George. You just said it and forget it. <laughs> so okay okay i got it george hold on chotamate kudasai oh wait one moment i don't know how to say one moment in german some of the camera effects are not seen are not scene oriented some of the camera effects are global some of them are scene oriented they're broken out into the little um you know the little lines over here? So that's it right there. You see these lines right here? Those kind of break up the sections, right? So, for instance, if I remember correctly, and again, I might be wrong because I don't know every stuff. Let's come over here to zoom and pan on this particular scene and embiggen the face. If I go back here, oh, nope. So even embiggening is also not scene oriented. So, there you go. You can do all of the things, all of the things, all of the things. Let's see. I think I covered it, gang. I think we did it again. It's fantabulous. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's alive. So that's it. That is a demo. Again, I uh, hope we got everything covered. Um, yeah. It's. I know it's a lot, gang. But the best you can do is just practice. Practice, 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 practice. And even you guys ask questions that I forget because I don't do it. <laughs> so, you know, it's easy to forget certain things. But, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool because now I remember, I think I do the different camera selections according to scene all the time. I just don't remember that because I don't do it as often. You know, you kind of set it and forget it, and then your scenes are running, and then you forget that that's a thing. So, good question, George. Glad to see that helped. And, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can email us. Support Dessa Ecamm at ecamm.com or you can email us at marketing at ecamm.com and we will get you squared away. I'll see you next Friday for another demo situation. And everybody, please have a fantastic weekend. For those of us here in Nietzsche Bay Cooney, aka America, I enjoy your holiday weekend. Um, try to rest, don't catch anything on fire. Don't start forest fires. Be careful of your fireworks, but enjoy yourself and don't eat too many hot dogs. Always puts me to sleep right after. Like I just, I just, I did one of those Coney Island hot dog eating contest type of things, but in my backyard and then I'm over on the lawn chair knocked out for, for weeks on end. <laughs> so, so try to take it easy folks. We shall see you next week. We got more cool stuff, more master classes coming. Just make sure you stay connected and uh, have a good weekend. Aloha. Let's play some music on the way out of here. Let's see. Um, dun, 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 dun. Let's make it fun. Hey, Jim. Good to see you here, boss man. I appreciate you. Thank you, Glenda. Thank you, Homesick Mac. Hey, uh, Homesick Mac, let me know. If you can make the stream tomorrow, maybe we can play your thing tomorrow. Because I, I have a light stream tomorrow. Um, you know, the my channel. Anyway, I'll, I'll send you a message. All right, aloha. I want.